Hi everyone, this is Kim Alia and welcome to a very special session with Jeremy Scher where he'll be presenting his very new Q repertory. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to give Jeremy a quick introduction. Jeremy has joined us for many of these occasions in the past, has always done an excellent job of presenting uh, invaluable information to the homeopathic community. So uh, uh, Jeremy uh, was found by homeopathy 23 years ago and began his formal studies at the College of Homeopathy in London in 1980. He completed a degree simultaneously in both acupuncture at the International College of Oriental Medicine and though he practiced homeopathy exclusively since 1982, he's used his knowledge of Chinese medicine uh, extensively in his teaching of homeopathy and it really shines through. Uh, Mr. Scher began teaching while still in college. He taught in most of the British schools and began his Dynamis school in 1987. And that's, it's the longest running postgraduate course in the UK. Uh, Jeremy's taught the Dynamis curriculum throughout Europe and North America and is a popular lecturer worldwide. He maintains a very busy practice in London, Tel Aviv, and New York. Uh, he was the first, Jeremy was the first to redevelop the science and art of provings after a century of near silence. And in 1982, he conducted the first proving of Scorpion. And since that time, he's completed uh, more than 21 different provings. Uh, he wrote the Dynamics and Methodology of Homeopathic Provings, which has become a standard text in most colleges and is the basis of worldwide proving guidelines. Uh, it's been translated into French, German, and Russian. And he was awarded a fellowship from the Society of Homeopaths in 1991 and a PhD from Medi Medicina Alternativa. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. He is a member of the North American Society of Homeopaths and is an honorary professor uh, of Yunnan Medical College in Kunming, China. In uh, 2008, Jeremy began his work in Tanzania on the homeopathy, you can see the website here, on the Homeopathy for Health in Africa project, which was specifically intended to help patients with AIDS. And uh, this is an incredible project. I've spoken to many different individuals who've come back and participated, uh, gone over to Tanzania and worked with Jeremy. And the results are simply astounding. Uh, the people I've spoken to have told me that, that basically almost everyone gets well. So this is an incredible project, well worth investigating. Uh, if you want more information, you should contact uh, Jeremy directly about it. You can go to their website. You can see it here. It's www.homeopathyforhealthinafrica.org. Again, that's www.homeopathyforhealthinafrica.org healthinafrica.org. You can also visit Jeremy's website, uh, which is www.dynamis, that's D-Y-N-A-M-I-S dot E-D-U, uh, and then I think you can go in uh, E-D-U, and then there's the sub uh, subsections of that website. And also, uh, Jeremy's come out most recently with an excellent, excellent book on the noble gases, uh, and hopefully he'll get a little bit of a chance to tell us a little bit more about that, because uh, it's getting rave reviews throughout the homeopathic community. So uh, Jeremy is certainly one of the great educators we have, and somebody who is really pioneering um, the advance of homeopathy for everyone uh, who is in our community. So Jeremy, thank you so much for joining us. Okay, well, uh, Kim, uh, first of all, thank you for the compliments because you made me about 20 more years younger. Uh, <laughs> I really have to update that bio of yours. Uh, <laughs> Sorry I would about that. Like practicing. <laughs> <laughs> I would have liked to be practicing homeopathy for 23 years, but uh, fortunately or unfortunately, it's now, uh, I think, uh, 35 years. <laughs> and uh, 30. <laughs> 35 classical uh, homeopathic provings to go with that. One of the things I'm really happy that we've, we've managed to do recently is uh, put up a lot of these provings on our website, uh, dynamis.edu, and we, we're working quite intensively to get them all published. So if you want to check out some of the new provings, uh, have a look at dynamis.edu. Anyway, uh, good evening, everybody, wherever you are around the world. It's uh, Good to have you here again, and I hope you can hear me well from uh, Tanzania, Africa. Um, and today I just want to talk to you about my QREP. This is another project that I've been working on over the last uh, eight or nine years, I guess, together with uh, Rafi Noy, a homeopath from uh, England. And uh, 
This is the repertory of mental qualities. So I'm going to tell you about that, why I created it, what are the principles behind it, and how it can help you in practice. I have to say that it's been incredible in help for me. Uh, I use it every day, I use it in, in every case, and uh, definitely I hope it will bring you the good results that I experience with it. So it's not only a repertory, but it's also a way of working. Okay, so uh, this is a QREP, and really it's based uh, more or less on the Bonninghausen system, uh, and I'm going to explain to you in a broad kind of terms about that. You, I'm sure you know something about that, but uh, what I'm going to tell you about is how I've adapted that to work today in uh, modern homeopathy. Uh, so, Bonninghausen, one of the things that he taught us is to use large general rubrics where you are sure that the remedy is in the rubric. So, rather than going for small particular rubrics or modalities or stranger and peculiars, you begin with the big picture, but the main point is that you choose something that you know the remedy will be inside. Only after that, when you've got that base, you go to the characteristic keynote, strange, rare, peculiars, and particulars. So, uh, as an analogy, we can say first you bake the cake with large generalized rubrics. So, if we're going to make a cake, which generally I don't do, but I kind of know the principle about, is we take the water and the flour and the butter and the sugar and the eggs and hopefully the chocolate and we put that all together to form the base of our cake. So there we've got a generic case which fits the totality of the case. Only then do we apply the icing which is uh, strange, rare and peculiar. So that's it in this case. And this is uh, the case especially when working with uh, mental and emotional uh, symptoms because most of the mistakes are made here. I teach thousands of students throughout the world, so I have in a way the privilege to see the mistakes we all made and to see the mistakes that are made and still made. And a lot of homeopathy these days is focused on the mind and mental symptoms. It's very different here in Africa, by the way, because we get very few mental symptoms, and I can tell you sometimes it's a joy to work with no mental symptoms. But we all know that that's the case of our practice in Europe or in the States or anywhere in the first world where a lot of people's energy is concentrated in the mind and in their emotions. But uh, it's very, very easy to make mistakes in mental and emotional symptoms. What I say is that the mind is a minefield and really you can take it any way you want and bring it to any remedy and any kingdom and any analysis and any psychology. So it's very important to be precise and to have a methodology to prevent us from uh, walking into those minds. So uh, what I try to do here with the QREP, the repertory of mental qualities, is introduce the Bunninghausen approach to the mind section. Uh, because Bunninghausen in his repertory focused more on the generals, especially some on the particulars, and a few of his large generalized rubrics made their way into the mental uh, section of the repertory, such as fear or sadness, uh, but not enough and not enough for modern day practice, really. So we've taken Bonninghausen and we've, uh, his system of large general rubrics and put it into the mind section of uh, Kent and all the repertories that are based on Kent, such as today's complete repertory or synthesis, etc. So, the QREP, uh, Repertory of Mental Qualities, let me tell you why I called it the Repertory of Mental Qualities, first of all. The first thing is that quality means the individual characteristic of a person. So the quality of a person is that he loves to be at home, or the quality of a person is that he thinks about water a lot. This is a characteristic. The second reason is that quality means a high level of accuracy and really in this repertory in creating it we've been very pedantic and particular as much as we can be about the accuracy of every edition and everything that we do. And the third thing is that the quality means remedy degrees according to intensity rather than frequency. 
So this is a different system than most repertories. Now I don't know if you're uh, aware of this and you should be, but in the Kent's repertory and in the modern repertories, the degrees are based more on frequency. That is, uh, the first degree would just be one proving symptom or one case, and then if that is confirmed a few times in provings or clinically, then that would get the second degree. <clears throat> and the third and fourth degree would be many confirmations, uh, both in clinic and maybe more provings, etc. So uh, that is a frequency way of measuring degrees, but in the repertory of mental qualities are made it according to the intensity and the quality. So for instance, there might be a remedy where a person just had uh, the symptom one time, one prover, but it was very central to that proving experience and it became a very important feature of that remedy. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, if we take lacfolinum, uh, then we see that it has a strong issue about knives in lacfolinum, knives and points. But really, only one prover had that symptom, but yet it's become a very important and essential part of that remedy. So I'll put that there as a four. And the same, you know, uh, which is quite strange. Take platina, for instance. Uh, you know, when you think of platina, everybody's thinking about the. Uh, the haughty woman who has delusions of being enlarged and everybody around her is small, but really that was only one prover who had that symptom picture and she was uh, described as a very sensitive and imaginative young woman, but yet it's become a central issue of platina, so that deserves to be a four, even though it's been confirmed many times since, so it will also be a four in the conventional so I think you get my point, and so these are the reasons we call it the repertory of mental qualities. And the point is that it's designed to use less rubrics of higher qualities. If you read the old homeopaths, this was a, a common saying of you know the, the previous centuries that uh, use minimum rubrics of maximum quality. And uh, that's something I strive to and try, I'm going to try to help you to do with the uh, QRA. So uh, let's look at the, the way I built it and why I built it. So finding the right rubric. For instance, you've got a patient who cares too much about others, who worries about them, and who is burnt out after looking uh, after other people. So <clears throat> what rubric are we going to use over here? You know, what should we take? We could take cares full of others. We could take sympathetic, anxiety for others or anxiety caretaking of others from, or weakness from nursing the sick. To be honest, literally, there are hundreds of rubrics you can take to describe such a person, and with the huge new repertories, it would be very, very difficult to find. Uh, and uh, you might find many that cover different aspects of this caretaking person, and you'd have to combine them together, or and you wouldn't know about many others of them. So what I've done is I've created a rubric called carers and helpers. That is for all those Mother Teresa's ab uh, among us that uh, you know have too much energy into caring for others and suffer from the consequences of that. So this is an example of a meta rubric in the repertory of mental qualities that can easily describe one idea or quality of a person. Let's look at another example. Uh, you have a patient who loves money worries about not having money and spends too much money. Okay, so what do we take here? Fear of poverty or avarice or ambition to make money or extravagance or anxiety money matters about or literally hundreds of other rubrics that cover this idea and material medical searches at the same time. So I've created a meta rubric or a quality dreams of money, uh, which is just money. And that means that this rubric will have every remedy that has anything at all to do about money. More money, less money, no money, dream money, delusion money, doesn't matter what, it will be in this rubric. Which means if you are absolutely sure that your patient has a money issue, you can uh, put that rubric in with a very, very high degree of certainty that the remedy will in fact be inside. It will be a large rubric, of course, but you can be pretty certain that it will be there. Another example would be 
a patient who fears snakes, thinks that he sees them, and dreams about snakes. Okay, <clears throat> you might take fear of snakes, dreams of snakes, delusion of snakes, but what about all the snake remedies? You know, how would you put them in? You'd have to make a search in them, reference work, and uh, then import it, and uh, it's a bit of a story. And there are many other rubrics to do with snakes as well. So I just created one meta rubric, one quality called snakes, and that will cover just about every remedy that has anything to do with snakes, which makes it also very easy to choose. You know, this repertory is designed to simplify your life and at the same time improve your results. So if you see a big snake issue, you just choose a snake rubric. Now here is my definition of the right rubric. The right rubric is a rubric that has the right remedy in it. Ha ha! It seems silly and uh, <clears throat> naive in a way, but I find this to be incredibly useful both in my practice and in teaching my students because that's what I focus on when I choose a rubric. I don't look to see if it's artistic, I don't look to see if it uh, covers the exact word of the patient, I don't care what it is, the only focus I have in my mind is will the right remedy be inside there? And there can be many reasons why it won't, even if the rubric looks nice, maybe it's only a modern rubric, like take for instance, decide to go into the country, and that is, uh, you know, there are not enough remedies to represent that idea. So that's what you have to think. How much degree of confidence do I have that the remedy will be there? And that's what I'm going to try and give you with the QREP, is a high degree of confidence that the remedy will actually be inside every rubric. <clears throat> so the mission is to create a repertory where the right rubric is easy to choose. Uh, so, you know, you don't have to think much if it's a money issue, caretaking, snakes, whatever. And second of all, that the repertory will have where the best available remedy must be in the chosen rubric. So you have a high degree of confidence in the rubric. And those two together, the right rubric with the rubric with the right remedy, will give you the right result. And that is my experience in practice. I can honestly tell you that from, you know, about seven years of working with this repertory, it has made my practice much more accurate. I prescribe more uh, small remedies with confidence and with great results, and that uh, my students use it, and it's very simple for them to use too. Uh, and so uh, this repertory, you have to understand, is designed to work in combination with standard uh, repertories, and I'm going to show you how that's done. So you work alongside the complete, alongside synthesis, whatever repertory you have, uh, it can work together with them. Uh, but a lot of the rubrics that I've created here are difficult to find in conventional repertories. It's things that you need every day. You wish you had the rubric. I wished I had the rubric, but I just couldn't find it. So I created that rubric. Uh, so, for instance, we have perfectionists, and that covers a lot more than fastidious or conscientious about trifles. There's much more perfectionist than that. Control, which uh, includes every issue of one person controlling another or controlling a situation being divided, double, fragmented, guilt, which is much more than anxiety about consciousness, obsessive compulsive, which you cannot find at all, uh, suitable rubric in the repertory, fixed ideas doesn't cover it. Failure means every aspect of failure, uh, delusions, fear, constantly failing, etc. Ambition on a much broader base, embarrassment as well. Opinion of others is a rubric I use very frequently. People are sensitive to opinion of others, and rarely in the conventional repertories you cannot find anything satisfactory to cover that, but it's a rarely useful rubric I use daily. Knives and points, anything to do with knives, points, injections, and anything similar like that. Home covers all things to do with home and homesick and desire to go home and dreams of home and every other aspect. Water. Type A people, people that run around all the time, uh, you know, always catching up and uh, work, work, work. Big ego, much more than haughtiness and selfishness and uh, everything else. Uh, trapped, money, animals in general, low self-esteem, a really useful rubric, low self-esteem, and so is victim. These are rubrics that are difficult to find, you know, a person with a victim mentality, 
uh, and you just don't know how to cover it exactly. You know, they just behave like a victim. They attract aggression, uh, but how do you take that? Carers and helpers, snakes, female hormones and their effect on the mind, clairvoyance on a much broader base, high and low, anything to do with up and down motion, water, I said dark, light, drugs in general, music, insects, and more that we're creating every day. Now I just want to show you that what goes into creating a rubric, how we create it. Well, we scan all the repertories and all the remedies in all the repertories, and I can tell you that there are just so many you'd, you'd be quite surprised. And I'm going to give you an example of the rubric high and low. So we start off here with high places, aggravates and fear high place and delusions sitting on a high place and suddenly you see there are loads of them. Delusion here is high as a bird and desire to be on high places. Here's another whole list about falling into abyss and falling out of bed and uh, falling from a height and another page of uh, um, falling children and falling into an open space. All these are small rubrics that you'd have difficulty in finding. Uh, so we're looking at a much broader vision. Here's another page, uh, falling out of bed and delusion elevated in there, and yet another page of rubrics with high and low, and yet another one, and yet more, and yet more, and yet more, fear of falling forward, uh, fear of falling backwards, and yet more, and more. So, uh, you know, we really put the emphasis on accuracy and quality, but so we don't just take the rubrics out of the repertory, but we look at the remedies and every remedy is checked back to source, back to the proving, back to the case to see where it came from and if it's valid or not. Uh, and that is done by a team of homeopaths who afterwards compare results. And as I said, we check it to the pro, uh, um, source and we don't just automatically combine rubrics, you know, uh, on an ad hoc basis, but we make sure that everything is correct. And there's also no automatic inclusions of families. So if we say cook room is obsessive compulsive, it does not necessarily mean that cook room arsenicum will be obsessive compulsive. We have to see that that's actually verified. Nothing is automatic here. We also comb the Materia Medica, both old and new. We go through as many books as possible, looking for remedies for each uh, rubric, verifying remedies. But more than that, and most important, we are we don't do a, just the automatic search uh, from the you know reference work or, or encyclopedia or Mephatica, etc. Because that can bring in many mistakes, and I've seen that in other repertories where there are many mistakes due to just automatic. Uh, you know, you take look for the word, word false, and you just take everything in, and then you get rubrics that are totally unrelated, like coma with eyelids falling, does not relate to high and low. So it has to be gone through every remedy individually. We don't do that kind of stuff. Also, very importantly, we look at many of the new provings. I'm constantly scanning new provings, both my own and others. So actually, I can say without any hesitation that the QREP is the most up-to-date repertory that exists in the world today in terms of new provings. It's much easier and quicker to add rubrics to the QREPs and to conventional repertories. So to my mind, sadly, the conventional repertories, uh, the modern ones, are about seven to eight years behind, even more maybe, in adding new provings, and there's no way you'll find those new provings. But uh, with the QREP, we are totally up to date with every proving that comes out. Just to give you a list of a few of the provings we've added over the last uh, year or so, you will see many remedies that just don't appear anywhere else, and the only way you'll get to them is through the repertoire of mental qualities. <clears throat> MSG, Niobe, and Perla Broom, uh, tea tree and uh, we are checking constantly in the journals and the websites uh, and we have a team of people adding remedies all the time. <clears throat> it makes for big rubrics but you know you're going to find remedies you wouldn't find otherwise. I'm really happy to say that the QREP has now joined the McRepertory family of, of, of repertories. Uh, we've been working on that a long time. We have to do a lot of updating to uh, of remedy names and that uh, was really uh, a big work to make sure all the remedy names worked, but uh, 
it's become available now, and uh, I'm, I'm really, really happy about that. It's been a long time coming. Uh, and you'll see when you open the QREP that every um, every remedy has a every rubric, sorry, has a definition next to it. You can open that definition and read it, so you know exactly what we meant when we designed that rubric. That's quite important. Um, I won't go into to, to save time. I won't talk about the grease too much right at the moment. But uh, as I told you, it's more about quality than about quantity. Uh, I'm going to leave the rest of this PowerPoint for later because I want to have time to do enough cases uh, with you. So we'll come back to you at a later point. Uh, I need to demonstrate this practically so you get the idea of how I use it. Uh, let me ask, Kim, am, am I still online? Can people still hear me? I hope. Hi, Jeremy. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you fine. Yeah, you're fine. Everything's fine. Okay, so, so everything's working okay. Well, yeah. that's cool. Okay. I'm, I'll try to show you the end of this PowerPoint later on, but uh, with a few more details, but I think you've got the general idea. And I want, to, I want you to see how this works in practice. So I've chosen a few uh, cases for you, OK? So uh, here's a, a man aged 45. And uh, he's had homeopathy previously for quite some time. Many remedies, can't remember, mainly Nux vomica, orum, and sepia. And he improved on orum for a while, but then it stopped working. And this is what his wife tells. He was adopted as a baby, and he was brought up being told that he was chosen from an orphanage called the Sunshine House. His birth father denied paternity, and his mother was very young, so they uh, sent him off for adoption. He's constantly uh, searching for his real mother, and he thinks about her a lot, all the time. He's very angry with his father. This is his adopted father, but he cannot confront him. A lot of suppressed anger, can't express it, and he also suppresses his anger at work. He's a very devoted father and husband, very responsible in his job. He has a strong sense of duty. He's very ambitious. He's always striving for the best, and he hates to compromise. Although he has a good job, he always jokes that he would much rather be, much rather be picking lemons in Crete. He just loves the Mediterranean and everything about it. Now he gets these black moods. They're all encompassing and they overshadow the whole family. In these times, he can just say some very cruel things to me, the wife and the children. We are just an extra burden and he says he will just walk away. He has a music degree and he's much better for classical music. He's very particular about the house being clean and if we go on holiday or to a restaurant, he's really fussy about where our room or table is. It has to be in the sun. But not in direct sun, just dappled shade, southwest facing is the best. So before they go on camp, he sends hours choosing the placement for his 10th camp, just to make sure they're in exactly the right place. He's got bad athlete's foot and serious knee problems, might need operation. He's much, much better from the sun and the heat in the summer. He hates cold, dark, damp weather, it puts him in a bad mood all day. He drinks too much alcohol and he cannot stop. And walking in the open air helps him as well. Now the patient himself tells, I get into black moods. If things are not good at work, I get very down. Gray, cloudy weather gets me down. I feel down and gloomy. I love Mediterranean weather. That is, what I'm re that is where I'm really happy. Music is part of my spiritual being. The main thing is the gloom. It affects my attitude to everything. Did I make the right career decision? After university, where I studied music, I just fell into being a salesman. I never had the confidence to do something of my own. I can be an employed person in a responsible position, but I can't do my own business. I can't find my own direction. I would love me to, to be doing my own thing and being in control of my own destiny, but I need to fit in with the company superiors. Difficult for me in confrontation, suppress the anger, I cannot see the way forward. I'm very fastidious. <clears throat> I feel let down by people who do not give 110%. He desires Mediterranean food, tomatoes, olives. 
I love the sun, I crave it. When the sun shines, I see things three-dimensionally. It gives shadows and depth and brightness of colors. Everything seems clearer. Clearer. When the sun doesn't shine, things look two-dimensional and flat. There is no depth or texture. I love the restaurant with a nice atmosphere, a nice spot in view of the sun. Recurring dreams in the past of big white bulbous wheels hurtling towards me, then darkness. Another dream, I was alone in the building. I had no windows, which is why I had to get out. It was dimly lit, and he was trying to get out. Okay, that's the case, and I've put some themes over here. Uh, he's adopted, he's got missing parents, he's got black moods, and they overshadow the family. Suppressed anger, responsibility, unable to be his own boss, lacks of confidence, fastidious, ambitious, desires music and better for music and much better sun and light. You can see that this case is mainly on a mental emotional basis, so it would be difficult to find it from physical symptoms. Now, uh, just to give you a quick analysis in one of the many tools of analysis I like to work, this is a circle of four elements, uh, fire, earth, uh, water, and air, and the analysis is that the, the case is here along the fire, air axis, with sunlight and father being uh, the issues on one hand, and mother music and black moods being the issue from the air side. This is a tool I use, some of it, and those who have studied it on me, with me would be aware of it, and others, it's something to look into the time. It just helps me to get a focus on the case and know where I'm going, what rubrics I'm choosing, and what needs to be cured in the case, rather than just collecting a bunch of rubrics. So, this is the next point, and this is what I do in every case, is I try to synthesize the main idea out of the case, to understand what is happening, what is the inner meaning of the case, and I try to do that in no more than one sentence. That is what I teach my students in Dynamic School, is to find the synthesis of every case with no more than six words, usually, that can summarize the whole inner idea. Here we see that a lot of the idea is about sun and shadow. And my synthesis is this, no parents, no sun, no shadow. No shadow, two dimensions. You heard before he spoke about the two-dimensional world. Well, a two-dimensional world means that there's no shadow, no depth dimension, no third dimension. So over here we see if there's no sun in his life, which he craves, there'll be no shadow. So he lives in this two-dimensional world, and the no sun relates to no parents, no love uh, and warmth. And uh, then, as a result of that, he's locked in this two-dimensional blue. He seeks the sun to see clearly in three dimensions, but he lacks a shadow, he overshadows a family, and he has uh, those black moods. And also, part of this is losing his direction, where he wants to go in life, which he said a couple of times. Now that I've summarized my understanding of the case, as you can see in this example over here, of the two opposites, you should not be dependent on the sun for your happiness. And let's go to a repertorization. And uh, here's a conventional repertorization using the complete repertory. I've taken fastidious and conscientious trifles. I've combined all the anger suppressed rubrics. I always combine rubrics of a similar nature uh, to get the biggest possible rubric in the Bunninghausen system I mentioned before. I've combined all music ameliorates, uh, nails complaints of what the athletes put, he had distorted nails, desire for cheese combined, uh, anger suppressed combined, we have that twice, we shouldn't do, and cloudy weather uh, aggravates combined. That's just a glitch that we see both, never mind. Uh, and I've looked through all these remedies, and honestly, I cannot find a remedy that fits my synthesis there of the sun and the shadow and the two dimension and the gloom of the lack of direction. One by one, I won't waste time of explaining why, but nothing here is making me happy. So here I'm showing you alternative repertorization using the repertory of mental qualities. I've taken light quality, which is essential to this case, perfectionist quality. Now you see these are much bigger rubrics, 422 remedies, 235, 252 in dark quality, ambition 183, and music 279. So five very big rubrics. 
But here's the magic. When you combine them together, you get only about 30 or 40 remedies. And that's a good basis to start working from with, with just the one uh, peculiar remedy or using the synthesis or essence of the case. You can now start uh, searching among those 30 or 40 rubrics and find a rubric uh, a, a, that a remedy that fits the essential nature of the case. But what we've done here is we've baked the cake. Water, eggs, butter, chocolate, milk. And we have that base. We know that the remedies here will fit the totality of the case. And really what I do here simply and, uh, you know, with a bit of experience you can do quite easily is go through remedy by remedy looking for something that fits the nature of the case as we described in our synthesis. Okay? So uh, here it goes, you know, you're looking and I see does it fit platina? No. Graphite? No. Calcaria? No. I keep looking through all of them. Ozone? Maybe. Orome is had plenty of. Staphylococcus is probably had. It doesn't even fit the case. And I look one by one. If you don't know the remedies, you have to read them. That's how you get to know the Materia Medica. I can teach you that technique another time. And finally, I see so. Yeah, that rings my bell. It fits the case. It fits my understanding. And it's all about sunshine. Okay, good. So I give him Sol Australis 200, uh, proven by Philip Robbins in Australia. And just to show you from the complete repertory some of the issues of Sol that fit this case. Deception aggravates. He doesn't like people not giving 110%. Discouraged. Direction is life. Does not know the direction in life. He said that three times and it's a black type symptom. Perfect. Dreams of taking control. Dreams of darkness, trying to find the light, perfect. Uh, dreams of life slipping away, that's a general idea. Dreams of life purpose about, he can't find his life purpose. Fastidious, grief from loss of creative outlet, and life choice has to make a big life choice. Self-control in general, that's anger suppressed. Sadness is if lost everything and succeed never. And then we remember that he, he said, his wife said, my parents said I come from Sunshine House. That's a nice little anecdote. Now maybe you could find this remedy from a lucky hit or a guess. You will not find it from the conventional repertories, uh, pretty much guaranteed. But uh, this, this is how we go about it and uh, how you can solve cases. Nice and easy this way. Six weeks later, immediately after the remedy, strong desire to go to the sun and get away from everything, desire for Mediterranean. Now I have more clarity and vision at work. Things seem clearer. I can see what needs to be done. I'm not worried about confrontation anymore. I see the way forward so clearly. Before I would have said nothing and hoped it would have gone away. My black boots are much better, less effective, less negativity, not shouting at the wife and kids, much more expressive, no longer gloomy and brooding. Since the remedy has not thought about his adoptive parents or wanted to continue searching for them anymore. Haven't thought about it for a second. After three weeks, he decided to buy a property abroad. He wanted to do this for years, and uh, now he actually did it. And he's calm and measured and taking it step by step, less stress, drinking less, sleep better, less worries, dreams pleasant. Knees much better, no problems since, so we can add that clinically. Athletes foot much reduced. One year after the remedy, he left his job and created his own successful business, much happier and more confident. After five years on soul, occasional repetition, he said, this is the most amazing remedy. My life has changed completely. I have my own successful business. I am happy and content. Every time I repeat the remedy, I see depth, color, shades, almost ethereal. Like a cloud is lifted and I can see things properly. And that confirms our diagnosis and understanding of the remedy. So that is a case of soul. Okay. Kim, still okay? Everybody with me? Are we still here? Yeah, Jeremy. Oops, have I lost you? No, yeah, no, yeah. can you hear me? Yeah, okay. good. Yeah, I hear you. That's good. And I'm moving on to the next case, if that's okay. Okay. Yeah, um, sounds good. Here is another case. All right. This is uh, a man aged 37. He's an audio engineer. He's had homeopathy for 10 years with no real change. 
He had many remedies, only camphor worked for a while, but then stopped working. So we have difficult cases here, you know, that, that have not been as successful so far. He's got a severe depression, it takes over my life. I'm often suicidal, intense loneliness, lots of feelings I cannot get out, a huge mountain between where I am and where I need to be. I'm always a sad person, I never smile. Lonely, totally alone, without anything or anyone, sad, suicidal, it feels like a black hole, I'll never get better, I cannot connect to people. I started at age 10 because I became separate from the other kids, I wanted a friend but they rejected me. I so much wanted to be friends with the other kids and to fit in. So I started picking up traits in myself which could cause them not to like me. Then I started turning these parts of myself off. I picked out the parts of me that I saw were not working and switched them off. I engineered myself. I was trying to be funny and friendly, learning jokes, continued to do this till age 28. But basically he changed his personality and re-engineered himself. I would hang out with the girls and then shut off. But the girls did not want me. My dark feeling pushed them away. I switched off all my romantic feelings, became numb and dead, shut down. A need to be accepted, but I did not have the right identity, so I engineered myself. But the strange thing is, the more I engineered myself, the more I got cut off. I have an engineering mind that is accurate, overrides my emotions. I changed my identity. Now people describe me as nice, but introverted and reserved. So yes, he's engineered a nice personality, but he's cut himself off, poor man. Dreams in which I should feel happy, but I am not, no feelings. Dreams of running away. Dreams of people having a fantastic connection between them. That's exactly the opposite of what he's experiencing, of course. Poor sleep, wake frequently, sleepless thoughts, no anger. I cannot relate or feel to anger. It's suppressed, but the sadness takes its place. Desire fat food, fish, avocado, mental fogginess, not mentally present, lethargic, passive, no energy, no motivation, apathetic, switched off, foggy brain. I'm a total failure at everything I do, taking a lot of antidepressants. Now I talk to his mother. Remember, at all possible, you should always talk to people around, because you'll get the full picture there. Mother, brother, father, wife, whoever. Um, and the mother tells, he was a very high maintenance baby, always hungry, always needy, nursing every two hours. He always had to be entertained, bounced, rocked, we had to entertain him constantly. He could not entertain himself. I think he always felt neglected and was therefore demanding. When he got his first vaccination, he screamed and screamed for days afterwards. His only brother was born and lived for eight weeks. His brother died soon after the vaccination. So some of you will jump straight to a vaccination remedy there, but you know, and it's a possibility, but I'd rather look at the totality and see what fits. He always had to be entertained, mesmerized by TV. Maybe he's got Asperger. He always wanted to be someone else when he was a kid. He would wear cowboy clothes for weeks and Superman outfits for weeks and the famous baseball outfit for months, obsessed with different identities. This is part of him trying to engineer himself and fit into different identities. He would take apart his sister's toys because he wanted to see how they worked. Then he could not put them back together again. It's a bit like he did with himself, isn't it? He took himself to pieces and he couldn't put it together again properly. He just never fitted in, never find his place, felt kids despised him. He had some misfit friends in high school, kids who couldn't seem to fit in anywhere else. Lonely, he started to fall into darkness. He got caught shoplifting several times and went to jail. He told me the police would, if the police would catch him, uh, he would slit his wrists because he could never go to jail again and feel so lonely. He said he would rather get die than go to jail. So I hid him from the police. Then he began cutting himself, sliding his own chest and arms with razor blades. So you see, the mother tells us that the, the patient didn't tell us. That's why you have to speak, speak to other people. That is why I got that is when I got really scared. Some people recommended I take him to mental hospital, but I knew that would be the end of him. That's the case. Okay, first thing, and this is my system always, 
first thing, understand the case and synthesize the case. Now, this is something that you know I've teaching dynamics for a long time, but I'm sure you'll get the principle very quickly, being clever people. So this is my synthesis. He's a misfit, re-engineered his identity to fit in, but himself got sh shut off. He's disconnected. He, and because he's disconnected, he must cut himself open to this to connect again. So he feels a misfit. He re-engineers his identity to make himself fit in, but in the process cuts himself off. Now he's disconnected. And to connect again, he has to cut his body, slit his wrist, cut his chest open to try and, like he breaks his sister's choice to see how they work, to try and find the connection inside. Okay, fair enough and simple enough, but now that we have a synthesis, if we approach a repertory, we have a focus of saying what kind of remedy are we looking for. Your remedy must fit your synthesis, otherwise you just keep working on it. That's the way it goes. So uh, here is a conventional repertory, forsaken feeling, suicidal disposition, estranged, and confusion of identity. Everything to do with identity are combined. Now, uh, when I look at this, I see I have 21 remedies, forsaken, suicidal, estranged, estranged, not connecting, not fitting, identity combined, and uh, Okay, that is, uh, you know, 21 remedies I can look for. Uh, but now I'm adding just one uh, rep or Q rep uh, rubric, which is failure. Remember, he said very strongly, I feel my life is a total failure. So I add one um, remedy from the Q rep, and now I'm cutting it down to 13 remedies. So what I'm trying to show you here is how you work side by side with a conventional repertory. You can act, mix and match the rubrics between them, and this will help you cut down the number, number of remedies and focus on the case. So here we see the combination of these 13 remedies, and now I'm going to look for a remedy that fits my synthesis. Is it Sorinum? No. Is it that more? Well, he had a bucket load of that. Uh, so, no. Uh, is it pulsatilla? Doesn't fit. Anacardium had plenty, but still it fits a little bit, and it should do if it's in all the rubrics, but not great. Sulfur, phosphor, up from carcinosum, no. Thuya, vaccination, maybe, had it, didn't work. Lilium tigrinum, nah, -uh, definitely not. Like a podium, no. Positronium, no. Mobile phone, yes. That is the remedy I'm looking for over here. Now, it would be difficult to find in a conventional repertory, but we see I, what I gave him here is mobile phone radiation, 12C daily. And the expressions that show you the mobile phone over here very clearly are, there's a huge mountain between where I am and where I need to be. It feels like a black hole. I will never get better. I cannot connect to people, feelings can't get out. So imagine you're standing with your mobile phone behind a big mountain and you just can't connect to anybody. Well, that's how I feel. And other expressions that fit that remedy. I turn bits of myself off. I shut down, cut off, cannot connect. I engineer my personality. I'm an audio engineer. Uh, so, and, and no reverse engineering. From the proving, which was done in the South Down Schools of Homeopathy and New Allah Isaac, it says, I didn't really feel, or I didn't feel or I really connected with the others. I didn't really feel I, I talked to anyone else all weekend. Lots of isolation and lack of connection. So exactly the feeling that he describes over here uh, of not connecting to others. Delusion we see over here, uh, what, I, what I was saying here, I remember now when I say no reverse engineering, it says that I'm saying I'm not picking rubrics backwards after looking at the case. These are the actual rubrics that I took. But here, now I'm doing a retro rep, which is saying, okay, let's look at the mobile phone remedy in the repertory and see what fits. Delusion, he has holes in his brain. Delusion, childish fantasies have Superman, cowboys, all that kind of thing. He is despised, errors of personal identity, he is separated from the world, uh, 
neglected children and babies. We saw that the, what the mother said about him. Dreams, seeing a person cut up, of being pursued, estranged from friends, and intellectual. So we see this fits quite well. And therefore, I gave him mobile phone 12C daily. And you see the whole issue with the mobile phone. Everybody looks happy and uh, seems happy. He has a rubric, dreams I should be happy, but I'm not from mobile phone remedy. But nobody's connecting. They're all connecting on their phones. It's not a real connection. It's a false connection, just like his identity is engineered to make a false kind of a connection. So perfect remedy for him on paper. What happens six weeks later? After the remedy, I had fear and panic for a week. Good. We love aggravation in homeopathy. Never be scared of it. Now I'm so much better, feeling very good in a much deeper way than I ever have before. I'm so happy. The sadness I felt for so long is gone. The apathy and lack of motivation are gone. The foggy brain is much better. I'm clear. Obviously, you have a mobile phone next to your ear. You don't have a foggy brain. More present in social situations, connecting more, stopped all antidepressants, medication, no need. One year later, much better, lots of new friends. I'm learning to be present, that I'm safe. I don't need to run away, and I'm powerful. Feeling of happiness is deeper and more consistent than ever before, and he's now on mobile phone radiation, uh, repeated occasionally. Follow up on three years later. I feel amazing, totally different than I ever have done before. Alive, powerful, consistently good feeling, very happy, hardly ever sad, sleep better, less guilt about sexuality. Now I have a good social circle, eating better, more exercise, no depression, no loneliness, no black holes. Life, work, and play are one and the same. Perfect. All really, really good. Only problem now is too much passion and energy what to do, one of the problems of getting better, and he was discharged. So that is the second case, and uh, what I've tried to show you here is how I work with conventional rubrics alongside the uh, repertory of mental quality. Kim, uh, are you still there, just checking in on you, and if there are any questions that have come up so far? Uh, no, Jeremy, uh, do you have another case to present? I mean, if you have one more, do you have another case yes, to present, or is that... Okay, so uh, I have uh, many, many more cases. Okay, if maybe if you do one more, then we can leave maybe the last fifteen to twenty minutes for uh, okay. part for for questions. Sure, I'll, I'll do one, and maybe maybe I'll do a, maybe I'll do a shorty as well. Okay, okay. so if, if, uh, right. let me just let people know that if they'd like to submit questions, please type them into the control panel, and at the end I'll, I'll relay those verbally okay. to Jeremy. Cool. Welcome everybody. What I'm trying to show you once again is both the system I, I work in most of the time, but how you can use the cure at the repertory of mental qualities. Uh, you know, in your practice, very, very easily, Aurelius. It's very simple to use it. It's very um, easy to choose a rubric. It's, uh, you know, you can choose it with a high degree of confidence, both that it will fit the case and that the right remedy should be in there. And by combining just a few simple, easy rubrics, it can lead you to a group of remedies that uh, should be able to fit the case. And often these will be remedies you never thought of before. So I expect a higher degree of accuracy and, and more fun and joy and productivity using the Cura. And uh, it's not an expensive investment, expensive investment for you. It's you know a small uh, repertory that you can now add on in your Mac repertory or any other software you have. He has an email from a homeopath, a friend of mine. Uh, I'm writing because I'm having troublesome symptoms that despite some solid prescribing and a bit of acute monkeying around, won't go away. I really need some help. I developed a red rash under both eyes. Worth left that has become big, swollen, red, cracked, itching, burning, smarting, two big half moons all under the eyes. It looks terrible and will not go away like two big red swollen half moons. I'm swollen under the eyes, above and below, spreading to the cheeks. It itch like the eczema. It can get red or purple, crack and bleed. I look like a raccoon. People look at it. It looks really bad. I can't practice anymore. I have similar two half moon discolorations under my breast that exacerbate along with the eye symptoms. And these got much more worse after that, more in sepia, a bit better after lacrosis, but now worse again. I've taken 
every remedy you can think of with little help. And here are some of all the remedies that she took and many others that she can't remember. So I'm trying to choose cases to, to show you that weren't solvable in the, in the conventional way. Uh, now, other than that, she suffers from a vitiligo, a vitiligo, which is the white spots on the skin. But this is developing. It's getting worse and worse as the years go on, and a right-sided goiter. Her eye modalities are better for hot water, and sometimes cold, and sometimes lacrimation. It started the eye symptoms actually when things were really good. Prior to that time, for about three years, things were pretty tough. It sucked, actually. I lost practically everything in the divorce, but assumed all the responsibilities, kids, dogs, cats, etc. I went through a total dark night of the soul trying to figure out who I was and what I wanted from this life. And I came out the other side feeling really whole and ready to move forward, things finally going really well, but now look like a monster. It's totally unfair. Happens so often, doesn't it? You know, while you're in the battle, you don't get the symptoms, but afterwards, through fatigue and a weakened immune system, then uh, it comes off. And my mother and grandmother and mother and sister all have these big dark bags under the eyes covered with mold. So obviously, if there's something hereditary there. I had it before in 2010, after my divorce, a really bad summer. At that time, it was like I didn't have a home. I feel like a leper monster, like lupus. Two half moons under the brown eyes, plasma and vitilago. I often have vitilago, it comes and goes. Anxiety that this is lupus. I also have muscular weakness, and at some point, urine smell bad. As a kid, they moved me to my grandmother. Part of me feels my home was taken away. The same during marriage. I had to sell the house and move from my home. Always homesick, always losing my home. After the divorce, I set to sell the house and again had no home. It's in the family. It happened to my grandmother too. We sell the house and then we have no home. My husband has a new home and family. I have a fear of losing everything to be left with no support or home. Fear to lose the kids, I'll go with their dad because he has such a nice home. The thing about having no place really gets me. The main thing was my mom. When I was seven years old, she got MS and left my father. We had to move home in the middle of move home in the middle of the night. There's a fear of mice, a fear to swim in the ocean, of what you cannot see. She doesn't like fish and she couldn't ever touch a live fish. No idea that people love me. An alone thing. I often say I'm alone. I don't get it that people love me and I can't ask for help. Anxiety for the kids. So here's my synthesis. You should understand that when I show you the synthesis straight away, I'm skipping some very important steps in the way of pre-analysis and analysis and other things that I teach, but that's fine for the purpose of this lecture. And here's my analysis. Alone, no roots, no home. Why do I say no roots? Because home is roots. That way we connect to the earth around us. And we, you can see that issue that she has a fear of what cannot be seen under the sea. So, uh, you know, this is an issue of kind of uh, no roots, uh, nothing underneath, nothing to grasp onto. You see this also, I would add to here that there's a water issue in the case, uh, because we see the aversion to fish and the fear of what is under the water. So that means this is like a plant growing on water um, and that can't therefore uh, connect to roots. It's a plant with no roots uh, and the feeling of no home and therefore a feeling of being alone. <clears throat> and very much uh, like cancer astrology sign, you know, connected to home, half moons, all that kind of thing. This by no means means that I will ever think of giving her a plant just because of that analysis. I'm not a user of the system of kingdoms. Uh, so, what do I do over here? I gave her molybdenum metallicum. Molybdenum metallicum. Why do I give her molybdenum metallicum? Well, let me show you and I'll just have to connect to this nice email that the kid sent me beforehand. Here are my rubrics. Uh, home and house and home quality, that is the first one. So everything to do with home. 
second water and water quality, and third vitilago. Now you see that looking through the remedies, and I'm looking for a remedy that is alone with the issue of home, very strongly and no roots, and I see, is it calc? Not exactly. She had it anyway. Mercury, that's not a home issue, big time, not like this case. And I look through every remedy, does it fit, does it fit? I don't know it, read it. I do know it, I know that this is not ozone, not floral, I know it's not like a podium, it doesn't have that issue. Do I know molybdenum? I do not. So I go to read it. And therefore, let's have a look at that. Ah, here's uh, the repertory over here. And I look at it, this is approving by uh, Peter Tuminello in uh, Australia 1995, Metallicum. I haven't studied it before, element number 42. And I'll, I'll just show you what I highlighted over here. Uh, I'm not in my home time, this is home for me, my apartment is home, I was uh, homesick, didn't want to leave home, decided to stay at home, still prefers to stay at home, wanted to go home, large house, don't feel at home, overwhelming feeling of all the dreams is that I'm not at home, I'm a traveler with no base, I have no place you can call home, I feel homesick, desire to stay home, homesick, I feel that we are far away from home, desire to stay home, desire to stay home, it's very strong, um, and the world is unsafe place as described by the provers uh, with a strong desire to stay home. So we see this is really important in this remedy molybdenum, and it's a main thing, and that is why I would give it the three or four degrees in my repertory of mental qualities because it's an important issue over here. Uh, so we gave molybdenum and metallicum, and uh, this is a follow-up email. I took molybdenum and met 30C. After the remedy, I had dreams every night for two weeks about moving house, packing up and moving. Perfect. Finding a new place to live, etc. Not bad dreams, very thematically consistent. I also felt very anxious about my kids. Otherwise, felt pretty good. The eye symptoms resolved nicely and felt clear for a few days. They began to return after eight days and lasted three days because she was exhausted from traveling back and forward to Europe. This time the eye symptoms were not as bad as before and they resolved pretty quickly and she was better by herself and uh, without repeating the remedy. She says, I, th I really think that molybdenum touched me quite deeply. After four months, Great remedy, feel much better, stronger than self, more secure, no eye symptoms, best remedy ever. After the first dose of molybdenum 30C, the eye symptoms totally resolved. They threatened to return twice after the initial dose, each time resolving immediately with repetition of molybdenum. 30C, single dry dose, will do. Well, that's great. So, uh, it's just another example over here. I've used two qualities from the repertory of mental qualities, water and home. Now, if you use the conventional repertories, you wouldn't find it because it's not in homesick or home or any other rubrics because it hasn't been added to uh, the repertory yet. Uh, the conventional repertories, like I said, they are very much behind. behind. This is a sad thing in, in the homeopathic world, it's no blame. There's a hell of a lot of work to do to put these, uh, to repertoire these remedies, I can assure you. And uh, really it's just uh, a matter of plodding on and doing it. But meanwhile, how are you going to access them? How are you going to know them? Well, I'm giving you away. But the cure up is not only for new and exciting remedies like I'm showing you over here. I find everyday remedies with it as well. It's just a matter of, you know, more simple uh, to, to choose uh, the rubrics and more definite that the right remedy is in the rubrics. Uh, so now, Kim, I think I'm uh, going to open it up for questions. If there are no questions, I'll show you another short case, but let's see what we have so far, okay? Okay, Jeremy, first of all, thank, thank you. It was an excellent presentation. Uh, the first question I have here is, how, how did you actually go about, because I, I can imagine there's a lot of work involved in making sure that you have every remedy associated with, with one of these uh, larger uh, uh, themes or sy symptoms 
or ideas. How, how, did, how were you sure that you incorporated everything from all the sources, Jeremy? How, what was the procedure you used to create these rubrics? Okay, well, I'm, I'm happy there for what that question. Uh, what we do, first of all, is we define a rubric. And we spend, uh, you know, quite some time thinking about the exact definition. What does perfectionist mean? What does whole mean? What does it cover and what it doesn't cover? So we have our boundary. Uh, then uh, we work in, in three groups. It's usually some students and then Rafael Noy, my colleague, and myself. Uh, each one of us separately goes through and looks for a group of all the rubrics in the repertories that can fit this idea. And then we start bouncing it off each other and saying, you know, does this rubric really fit or doesn't it fit? Until we really come down to a group of rubrics that we feel certain cover our definition. And then we start combining them in very uh, in many different ways, like all the delusions together, all the dreams together, all the fears together, etc., uh, etc. Et it, there's some rubrics that are quite easy, like if you take the rubric, uh, you know, insects, and it's quite easy to, to look for bugs and look for cockroaches and look for spiders. But when it comes to rubrics like obsessive compulsive or low self-esteem, you really have to think outside of the box of it. <laughs> then uh, we repertorize all these rubrics in, in many different ways, and we each separately, working alone, come up with a list of remedies that we think can uh, be the base for the rubrics. Uh, and then we search the Materia Medicus in reference work and encyclopedia homeopathic, and so we get as much as possible for all the possible combination of themes. Now we have a list of uh, remedies, but each one of us has it separately, and we start to see where the, there's a contradiction. Obviously, arsenicum is going to be a major remedy in perfectionist, <clears throat> but then there might be some other remedy there that we don't agree on, or we don't know, or you know, one found and the other didn't find. Then we go back with each one of them to the source, and we say, where did it come from? Where was that addition? Uh, you know, what materia medica, what case? And we discuss it among ourselves. And we, does that really fit, or doesn't that fit? Until we feel quite secure. If we, you know, if it doesn't fit, we'll take it out. If it's just one little symptom from approval, or one little clinical thing, we'll make sure that it actually vanished with the remedy, and we'll add it just with one point. <clears throat> so it's a lot of discussion and back and flow and a lot of searching. Then we, we read all the journals with the new provings, and I have people constantly scanning for provings that we've missed out, and the websites uh, so that we get new provings, and then we'll again do this procedure. So for instance, I have one student at the moment, Kelly in Maine, and she's going through all of Nancy Herrick's provings, which I was shocked to find, you know, are not actually so well represented outside her, her book. So we're just going through it and adding lotus and other remedies <clears throat> in, and uh, you know, one person will suggest uh, which rubrics it goes in, the other will check, and the other will check, so that's how we keep adding together. So it's really a, a scanning of all repertories, material and medicals, and new information, and then a team discussion to see what and where it goes in and does it. I hope that covers it. Excellent, Jeremy. Jeremy, I'm going to go ahead and make myself the presenter just because I'd like to make a couple of quick announcements and then we'll continue with the questions. I can make I can make you the presenter back again momentarily. Yeah, no worries. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to mention to everybody, uh, for those of you who joined us a little bit later, that uh, Jeremy's working on some excellent projects. One is his uh, AIDS project in Tanzania. Here, I'm going to just meet you out here for a second. There's a little bit of background noise his uh, Tanzania project. If you want more information about that, you can go to his website, homeopathyforhealthinafrica.org. That's homeopathyforhealthinafrica.org. And you can also visit his website, which is uh, www.dynamis.edu. www.dynamis.edu. And also I want to mention that Jeremy has a new book out uh, maybe you can just, uh, before you answer the next question, you can just tell us a little bit about it. It's a, a book on the noble gases, and uh, it's been getting quite uh, well received within our community. So, uh, Jeremy, can you, 
can you go ahead and tell us a little bit about the uh, Noble Gas book, and then I'll go ahead and sure. get the next question. Sure, I, I will. I will indeed. But I want to correct you on one thing here, Kim. It's not a book on the Noble Gases. It's a series of book on the Noble Gases. Ah, okay. It's, uh, and the first, yeah, the first one is helium. And it's quite a good point. I'm, I'm happy you actually made that little mistake, Kim, because um, the, the point is that, you know, when I actually went to a publisher with the book Helium, uh, several homeopathic publishers, they say, no, we, we can't do, we, we won't publish a, a book with one remedy only. People want lots of remedies. Well, I can understand people want lots of remedies, but uh, this book is much more than uh, a book about a remedy, really. Of course, it tells you everything you need to know about helium, from the very physical to the highest emotional and spiritual, uh, including many, many cases. Uh, but it's also a book that is, uh, is teaching you how to investigate the remedy to its very, very depth, how to take the symptoms of approving and clinical symptoms and take it deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and understand it until the, the highest possible potency of understanding. And if you can follow this through, it's going to give you much more than just having another remedy that you put in your bag for a rainy day. It will teach you how to think about remedies, how to, how to crack a proving, how to open it up, and, uh, and that's a really important thing. Together with that comes the knowledge with each noble gas about the whole period before it and afterwards. And you will find these noble gases are really, I have to say, the most fascinating uh, remedies around. That's why I've been studying them for the last 25 years. Because each noble gas is the completion of a period. And, and the whole period is really uh, trying to become that noble gas because the noble gas is so perfect. So my idea was that by studying the noble gases, we will understand what the perfection of that period is and then understand what all the remedies in the period are striving towards. So it's, it's like, you know, when you do a jigsaw puzzle, you have to start with one end and then that will show you the way. This is how it is with the noble gases. Each, each uh, book, therefore, is one of the remedies. Helium is published. Neon will be published. Uh, uh, quite soon, and I've already written Argon and I'm um, writing Krypton right now. They are very tough books to write because it's not just you know a superficial covering of some emotional essences and uh, and symptoms and uh, many remedies. It's really about developing your understanding as a homeopath, not only of the remedy and the proving, but of the world around you and the universe around you and. I promise you, if you if you read uh, any of these noble gases, uh, they are quite mind blowers because they'll teach you a lot of stuff about the the universe, our origins, our souls, where we come from, and where we're going to. Uh, so it's a long journey for me, Kim. You know, writing these books, I've really been spending a lot of time of uh, on it, but it's uh, it's really one of the most mind blowing things I've ever done in homeopathy. Fantastic. All right, Jeremy, here's a question from one of the participants. They ask, I wonder if the mobile phone case, if he quit using his mobile phone, uh, would that have helped? Oh, no, uh, if they stopped using their mobile phone as much after taking the remedy. Uh, you know, it's a good question, and I should have asked it, and I didn't ask it. Um, so I'm going to do it. If I ever speak to the guy again, when I speak to him again, I, I will try and remember to ask if there was any effect on that. And you know what? Uh, you're very right because I should have made the emphasis to stop speaking on the mobile phone, and that is definitely my mistake. It should be removed as an obstacle to cure. I probably got it too excited about how well the remedy worked and, and forgot <laughs> my manners about removing obstacles. So, so thank you for that reminder. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And uh, somebody else asked here, Jeremy, the for your Q rep. Uh, which software programs is it currently compatible with? I'm really happy to say that it is now compatible with every software program that I know of that exists. Uh, uh, Mac Repertory has been a huge important addition and, and really thanks to Kim because he did a lot of work on you know helping us uh, you know to bring it into the Mac Repertory family but it's also available on Radar and Opus and ISIS and Homia Quest and will very soon be uh, available on the complete dynamics too. 
So I'm happy to say everybody's adopting it because a lot of people are asking for it. I, I know that you know people are putting pressure on the repertory companies and they comply. Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so somebody here asks: So if one were to purchase the QREP, would it incorporate into the repertories as separate? I can answer that one. It, it's it just becomes one of the repertories that you have access to. Uh, actually, I can just show you really quickly if you would like. Uh, here you can see I'm. Uh, I'm in uh, McRepertory, and uh, actually I've got that repertorization that Jeremy was just showing you. But here you can see I'm currently in the complete 2013. If I click here at the bottom, you can see that I can choose any of a number of different repertories, including the QREP. Here I click on QREP, and now you can see here I'm in the QREP, and here are the uh, chapters of the QREP. And this is the most current version with all of the updated rubrics. Uh, so this is, if you're buying the, uh, the version in McRepertory, you will be getting the most recent version. The the price, uh, the regular price is ninety nine dollars for the QREP. Uh, if you, it it is going to be on sale. Uh, I believe the price will be seventy nine dollars for a short period of time. Uh, if you want to order the QREP, again you uh, you'll have to have McRepertory. Uh, if you want to order it uh, inside of McRepertory, won't stand alone. Uh, you can call the Synergy offices. Uh, you can call either four one five eight nine five. 5777 or you can call the toll free number which is 1877 yes kent or hold on a second here or 877 937 5368 that's 1877 yes kent or 1877 937 5368 and you can just call them or uh, either to order the product or to get more information about it Okay, great. So let me go to the next question. So, next question is: uh, Is there, Jeremy, is there a meta rubric in the QREP reflecting themes of criminality, hatred of police, etc.? Actually, uh, that that's good because uh, this is one of the of our in our list of to-do rubrics that we have. Uh, criminality is definitely one of the <coughs> top, and seeing you requested it, we'll definitely bring it into consideration. Uh, we, you know, it takes us about three to four months to do each rubric. It's it's a lot of work. So, and uh, we just the last one we completed is big ego, and the next one of the list is uh, spirituality, spiritual people, which is quite difficult. Uh, so we've got a list and. Uh, and uh, criminality is definitely in there, and we've already started adding rubrics. When we look at the new provings and we see anything criminal, we add it into the list so we don't have to go through those provings again. <clears throat> but we do, I want to say, appreciate your feedback and uh, suggestions for rubrics. We will try to incorporate it. Things that are really useful in day-to-day -day practice and that you can't find in conventional repertories and that you see you actually need more than once a week. That's the kind of thing that we want to use. And also, you, you see remedies, you want to add remedies, you, you want to point out a mistake or anything like that. We are very open and, and uh, happy to get any feedback that you have. Great. All right. Uh, here's another question. I have the QREP which I bought for Radar several years ago. Jeremy mentioned that it's being continuously updated. How can I get these updates? Uh, well, if you're still on Radar platform, you have to talk to your Radar dealer. And, uh, the Radar office has just installed the latest update. If you're on 10.5, then uh, join me on putting pressure on, my, uh, on, on your dealers because I'm doing the same is to have the update soon. They thought it was technically impossible until recently, and now they discovered it's technically possible. So you should be able to get an update on 10.5. Phone your dealer three times a day. OK, great. Um, OK, so here's another question, Jeremy. Why didn't you use a skin rash <laughs> under eyes and breasts in rubrics? Uh, you know, it would be possible, but the reason I chose the vitilago is because, uh, you know, it's a characteristic and dynamic symptom. So you could have also looked for, for that uh, rubric, skin rash under eyes and breasts. 
I'm not sure if it, it mal would be there, but theoretically it's a good possibility. You know, look, whenever you repertorize, there's not one correct repertorization. What's important is that you look through your repertorization and find the one correct remedy that fits it. But, you know, if you put in that rubric, maybe you'd find molybdenum or, and you'd find something that fits, that would be great. If it doesn't, you have to change your repertory and look for something else. So it's a good idea and, you know, be, be useful to look at that, that rubric too. Very good. Okay, Jeremy, here's another question. Uh, as mental symptoms are interpretive, how, are, how can you be so sure that what theme you take is 100% sure? Well, this is exactly the point that this, this repertory is designed to, to counteract interpretive. Interpretive is when somebody says, uh, I feel alone, and you take delusion friendless. That is interpretive. But over here, because the rubric is all inclusive, so if the person says, you know, I, I just, um, I have dreams of knives in the night, and you take the rubric knives and points, well, you know it includes every possible thing about knives and points, so it doesn't matter if you interpret it a bit differently. But we're actually lowering the interpretation level here because we're saying if you see knives in the case, it's got to be in the SNIVE rubric. If you see obsessive compulsive, it's got to be in the obsessive compulsive uh, rubric. It's, it's much less interpretive than using the conventional uh, rubrics because you only take what you see in the case to what you have in the repertory. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no middle man and there's no small delusions, small fears, small dreams uh, that you have to take. If, if in the molybdenum case I had to say, I'll take homesickness, that might be interpreted because maybe it's not homesickness, maybe that's just a feeling of having no home. Or if I took delusion she has no home, that might be interpretation. But when I take the meta rubric, quality of home, that contains everything, so there's no interpretation in it anymore. I, I, I'm very wary of interpretation, and it's one of the reasons that I wrote this record. Jeremy, uh, for a lot of these uh, rubrics, uh, you know, they've got sub-rubrics, like for example, home and house, and then you go inside of it, and it's got two sub-rubrics. Okay. Could you explain uh, why you have, you distinguish yeah. two, and, and when, when and where you would use these different rubrics? Yeah, good, good question. Thank you for that. Because what, what you've seen there is a, a primary rubric. So there's two rubrics actually in each one. So here we have four degrees, one, two, three, and four, experimental, everything, bold, and essential part of the remedy. Now, that's the Bonninghausen method, but here I've taken the Bolger's method, which you see very well in Bolger's synoptic or in, in Fatak's uh, repertory. And what they said is something slightly different from Bonninghausen. They took small rubrics, but only with the most essential remedies in those rubrics. So, for instance, you might find a rubric called um, in Fatak's repertory here and there. Here and there actually means wandering symptoms or wandering pains or wandering itches. But you'll only find about 15 remedies in there. And then you say to yourself, well, how can that be? Because in, in Kent or the Complete, I see tens and hundreds of, of remedies in wandering pains. And here they're saying here and there's only 15 remedies. Well, that's because they chose the ones that are most characteristic of that uh, symptom. So these are really the ones that that, that, that symptom is an important part of their makeup. So we've done that with the primary rubrics. And for instance, here is knives and points. So the primary rubrics is all the rubrics where knives and points are very important part of the whole uh, of the whole idea of knives and points. So you see, for instance, Illumina, which has big things about knives, and you know, um, for instance, um, Fial seeing blood also as a result of that, and other stuff like that. And Roctonos, which is all about points, you know, like the stinger of a scorpion. Um, Crotalus Cascavella, the same thing. Mercury knives is an essential issue. Platina knives and points, silica knives and points. So all these remedies are where knives and points 
are a really important feature of the remedy. There you see lactolinum I mentioned before, or lysine, but you might not know that it's very important in positron, it comes up a lot in that remedy, or spigelia for instance. So I'd use this only if I had a case where I said, this is so much knives and points, it's such an important issue of the case. If it's not the essential issue, then it's not the right remedy. And then I can uh, check this rubric, the primary rubric, to see if it fits. So sometimes I'll just combine two primaries, or primary and and, and, a, and the bigger one, uh, and it's just the kind of higher focus of the repertory. I want to Great. cover another thing that you see in the repertory of mental qualities, and that's the family groups. Uh, so we've created families that can pass through as well, and that's something you also don't have in conventional repertories. So, for instance, we've created the oral group, the alumina group, the carb group, our genitive group, snake group, gem group, lac, lac group, noble gas group. So, for instance, here I'm taking victim, carers and helpers, OCD and home quality, and there I see that the carb group goes through. So, I might, you know, although I'm not saying that definitely carbolic acid would have all those symptoms, but it's a possibility. So you could now go and check which of the carbs actually go through uh, all these rubrics. So it gives you uh, access into the families, although we don't include all the remedies in each family automatically, which I think is interpretive and excessive, it gives you a gateway to seeing that, you know, maybe the noble gases will come through and then you can start checking is it xenon or krypton or, or argon or something else. So it's another side of the repertory. Uh, so, you know, what we're doing is modern rubrics that you need in everyday practice that are easy to choose, that include all the remedies and the right rubric with the rubric with the right remedy should give you the right result. And the main idea is, is keeping it simple, really, is, uh, you know, improving your results at the same time. Okay. Back Fantastic, Jeremy. Unfor unfortunately, we're out of time. There's a lot of other questions that people are posting here, but I I'm sure we'll have you back in the future and we'll you'll have a chance to address these other questions. I want to thank you. Uh, I want to thank I'd you, I'd be happy to, and yeah. Yeah, thank you. It was an excellent presentation. Thank you, everybody, for your participation, for your excellent questions. And uh, Jeremy, uh, let's have you back on very soon. There's so much uh, richness to this um, to this repertory that you've created, and there's you know there's so much more that you can share about it. So uh, please come back very soon. Okay. It's always my pleasure, Kim, and thank you for facilitating us. Okay. Take care, everyone. Have a good rest of your day or evening, and uh, okay. look forward to the next session. Bye, yeah. everybody.